Hello there, my fellow fire warriors, and welcome to another lore video on the high-tech units of the Tao Empire. This is far from our first video on the mighty Tao battlesuits, yet nevertheless this is a very popular and very famous design. The only reason I didn't cover it sooner is because I couldn't figure out how to split its lore into two distinct episodes. Because yes, you are gonna get two of them on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the mighty XV-88 Broadside. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The XV-88 is one of the most heavily armored units that can be fielded by the Tau Fire cast, and as such, they are only worn by the most experienced Tau veterans. While it is similar in design to the much more common XV-8 Crisis Battlesuit, the broadside sacrifices mobility and maneuverability, and instead gets some of the most devastating weapons in the Tau arsenal. The broadsides are commonly seen deployed in the heavy conflict zones all around the Tau Empire, such as against the Orcs on Dal If, and during the campaigns of the Tau's Third Sphere expansion into Imperial territory. Those races that have faced the Tau in battle with these battlesuits have grown to be very afraid of the broadside. While the XV-8 Crisis Battlesuit is by far the most common battlesuit encountered by the Imperium, the XV-88 Broadside has been identified as far back as the Damocles Gulf Crusade, when it was used to engage heavy armor and provide fire support to the squads of the Fire Warriors. During the Damocles Gulf Crusade, the broadside was quickly identified by the Imperium as a serious threat to their armored vehicles, whose soldiers soon learned to dread the whip-crack sound made by the hypersonic speed of a heavy rail rifle round. This distinct noise, unfortunately, could only be heard after the shot had already hit. In the battles against the Tyranid High Fleet Gorgon during the defense of the Kelshan Sept, the XV-8 broadside teams proved highly adaptable and effective in combating the giant alien creatures, especially after a refitting of their secondary weaponry. The mounting of twin-linked plasma rifles in place of the standard twin-linked smart missile systems made these battlesuits even more effective, at least when confronting the gargantuan Bio-Titans of the Tyranids. A recent addition to the broadside arsenal came in the Great War of Confederation, when its primary heavy rail rifle armament was configured to be replaced by twin-linked high-yield missile pods. During initial setbacks in that war, it was discovered that the masses of attacking orc waves and the light nature of their scrap vehicles meant that the heavy rail rifle, although deadly, did not have the fire rate required to stem overwhelming tides of attackers. The high-yield missile pods, on the other hand, provided more than adequate to destroy the crude scrap-armored orc vehicles and more. Ever since then, many Tau commanders have included this variant in their cadres, either on its own or sometimes in a formation with more traditionally armed broadsides. In open terrain, as on Taros or the ice plains of Isenheim, a few broadside teams were enough to negate entire tank companies quickly turning them into fields of smoking wreckage. During the Taros campaign, for example, a formation of XV-8 broadsides engaged Imperial forces at the Battle of the Phydra Heights. In this brutal conflict, the broadsides accounted for seven confirmed armor kills against the 12 Talar armored regiments of the Imperial Guard. All of that in less than 30 minutes with their kills including a Banebait Super Heavy called Draco Rex. This forced the 12th Talarn into retreat, and dealt a hammer blow to the otherwise stout-hearted morale of the Talarn units. The distinctive whip-crack sound and hypersonic speed of a heavy rail rifle became synonymous not only with the desert fighting on Taros, but almost all Imperial engagements with the forces of the Tau Empire. Imperial forces fighting on the Gracial Front of the Achilles Crusade in the Jericho Ridge 
have recently reported encountering a variant of the standard XV-8 broadside, which replaces the heavy rail rifle weapon configuration with shoulder-mounted twin-linked ion cannons. Groups in both the Ordo Xenos and the Adeptus Mechanicus are very keen to recover an example of that variant for further study, although the reasons of these organizations are quite conflicting. It was the decision to combine the deadly rail weapon technology of the Hammerhead gunship with the most successful of the Tau battlesuits at the time, the XV-8 Crisis battlesuit, which indeed produced the vaunted XV-88 broadside. Designed from the ground up to offer Tau combatants long-range fire support, the broadside battlesuit teams have exceeded expectations ever since they were concepted becoming the mainstays of the hunter cadres and tank destroyers of legendary reputation, upon the many battlefields of the Tau Empire. The reach of a broadside is a potent weapon in and of itself, and that is exemplified by the battlesuit's signature weapon, the heavy rail rifle, which can cut through the defenses of almost any armor and even enemy entrenchments at extreme range. As already mentioned, the whip-crack retort of its fire is greatly feared by all the enemies of the Tau. The broadside battlesuits are also small enough to utilize cover on the battlefield in comparison to other vehicles, which makes them ideal for supporting fire warriors with much-needed anti-tank firepower on the front line. This rates favorably in comparison to the XV-8 Crisis battlesuit, which often bears the brunt of an enemy attack. The XV-88s are most commonly deployed alongside fire warriors to form a static defensive line, or provide the equivalent of mobile artillery to support a Tau advance. The broadsides are commonly fielded in teams of one to three members, and can be carried by Tau Orcas or Mantas for transport to the battlefield on a planet's surface from a Tau fleet in orbit, and there they can provide heavy fire support for Tau Hunter cadres. Sometimes, just one broadside may be charged with providing fire support for a smaller Tau infantry unit. However, once deployed, they are quite slow moving in comparison to the crisis suits, partly due to their lack of jump jets. Their need for a static firing position means that they had to be deployed with care and only when an engagement is imminent, because it does take a bit of time for them to reposition and when they do that, their main weapon is far less accurate. Their standard secondary weapon system, the smart missile system usually, was chosen to make up for this shortcoming. The heavy rail rifle and the smart missile system are complementary tools of destruction which are system linked on broadside battlesuits to provide lethal accuracy. For accurate deployment, the broadside battlesuit pilots rely on good information from forward Pathfinder teams and other Tau scout units. As with all Tau Firecast warriors, the doctrine laid down in the Code of Fire instructs all warriors to fight closely together, with each member of a team doing his best to protect not just his comrades, but other nearby teams of the cadre. With this training, the Tau units can use overlapping fields of fire to provide all the teams with mutual support on the battlefield in case of an enemy assault. During the Taurus campaign, the broadsides were widely deployed in support of hunter cadres on the defensive. They could not be deployed as part of the fast-moving Pathfinder raiding forces, or as armored counterattack forces which might be required to operate in the desert for many many days fighting, and then withdrawing, and then moving to attack again. Instead, when an engagement was imminent, Orcas and Mantas would quickly move broadside teams into position, usually holding a ridge area or an area of higher ground with a good field of fire. The broadside teams could then target the enemy at maximum range, singling out enemy tanks and troop carriers before being picked up again after the battle by Tau aircraft. Using these rapid deployment tactics, the XV-8 broadside battlesuit teams could lend their potent fire support without slowing an armored hunter cadre down as they race to a new position for the next battle against the Imperials. The pilots of the broadside battlesuits are fire warriors who have progressed to the rank of Shas Ui. 
Many of those newly promoted to the Shasui rank are assigned to broadside teams before moving on to the XV-8. That's because the support role served by the broadside makes it ideal for the pilots to learn the basics of battlesuit warfare while still inflicting heavy damage on the enemy. Those of the Shasui who have only been trained in the use of an XV-8 crisis battlesuit can choose to transfer into an XV-88 for additional training after the initial assignment or they could continue training just in the XV-8. However, within the Firecast military academies, it is regarded important that the Shasui should have experience in both types of battlesuit, before he can be promoted to the rank of Shas Vrai. Some pilot teams have also performed the ritual of Talisera, and they will transfer together to form a complete and bonded broadside unit. After serving their time piloting the XV-88s, a team will either return to the XV-8 to complete their training, or, if they performed extremely well, they might be promoted directly to the rank of Chasse Vrai. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the XV-88 broadside battlesuit for today. Hopefully you did not take a shot every time I said broadside or XV-88 today. I'm also gonna be making a second video on these things, where I'm gonna go into more detail on their weapons and the unique formations they are used in by the Fire Warriors. Is the broadside among your favorite Tau battlesuits? What do you like or dislike most about it? Or do you prefer the more agile and maneuverable ones? Do you like speed or firepower? Please share your thoughts or questions if you got any, if you want, in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and peaceful day. For the greater good.